Hello YouTube, it's uh, Pac-Man building time again. Uh, today we're going to try and get these sides finished after the disaster that was last time when uh, my jigsaw decided to... Well, I don't know if it's my jigsaw, but we'll, I think we'll find out in this episode what the problem was. Um, yeah, finish the sides off, do a couple of extra bits and pieces. It's a bit, a bit longer this uh, episode. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. It's, I hope it hasn't gone too long. I've tried speeding a couple of bits and pieces up. Uh, the boring bits. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'd play a bit of Power Stone 1 on the old uh, Naomi system again. <coughs> uh, this is the game I remember coming out uh, for the Dreamcast, um, one of the, the, the launch titles, and it made me buy a Dreamcast originally because uh, it, was, it was an arcade perfect port. Uh, it's just, it's such a different fighting game. Um, it's a 3D arena, you can run around, get the Power Stones. Do a bit of dive kicking like that. Where's the other power stone? There it is. Let's see if we can uh, kick Rogue's ass here. There we go. Right, now we've done that, let's get on. Okay, so we've got a bit of wood and a little vice here, a little workbench. We're going to use this little scrap bit of wood which actually came off the edge of there. <laughs> it's a mix sour. Uh, P38. So let's get a screwdriver so I can open this. Right, got it open, and it's this grey goop that absolutely stinks. Smell that? Can you smell it? Probably not. Um, so it says. A golf ball size. I don't want to put that on the arcade machine. Put that there. Golf ball size. Um, gloop of this, and a pea size amount of the hardener. So I've got my little spatula thing. So I'll put some of this on there. Make sure not to get it on the. Side. I haven't got much room in here at the moment, unfortunately, due to monitors and things. So. Uh, I don't put too much in because it'll probably dry by the time I get the second one ready. That should be enough. Let's zoom in. Let's get one of these off cups to mix it. I'm going to use some of this hardener stuff. Oops. That's about pea sized amount, I'd say. I don't want to put it on the FA machine. Right. I'm going to mix this all together so it becomes the same colour, a slightly pinky colour. Move that off there before it falls off. I wish I had <clears throat> some way of cutting straight lines and I wouldn't have to do all this shit, but I managed to do it originally for the other bits of the other sides. I think it's just because it was a, I was trying to do an ever so slight angle and if it was slightly off then it screwed up the look so I think it's quite hard to do with the jigsaw maybe not I don't know let's just mix the rest of this in okay let's put this on right put this on as smoothly as possible I'll have to put two lots of this on, we'll see. 
Yeah, it's going to be a really nice straight line when we finish. Isn't this fun? Not really. There's a cat. No, you can't come in. Busy. Sorry. I suspect that's Guinness. Gives you a bit of a cry, baby. Right. Got both sides now lined up. Oh, you can't really see that. On the workbench. Well, it's not really a workbench, is it? Um, our Bondo stuff is going to set. It's going to apply to both sides, so it's ever so slightly raised. I'll speak outside of my face mask. <clears throat> ever so slightly raised so I can sand it down. So we'll start doing that now. Zoom out a bit. Okay, let's go. This side is really good actually, if I look from the side, apart from maybe this bit here, which isn't too bad. This side, it's here, where I'm having a bit of a problem, if I'm honest. I think we need a bit more. Okay, I'm just a bit of a perfectionist really, I'm just want to get it exactly. I mean, it's pretty flat now, along here, which it wasn't before. Uh, pretty smooth now. Just little divots like this that... I don't know, I don't know if that's to be seen in the end, but... I'm just not 100% happy with it. Yeah, I don't know. This side's perfect. This is done. But I want to use this as a reference point. So I'll keep that there. I think I'm just going to put some more on here. Fill the gaps, sand it down, it should be pretty much as good as this side then. And this side's pretty good. When it's down here, yeah, it's pretty straight. It's pretty good. And I think this was the one on the bottom. And as the, blade, the original blade was going through it, it just gnawed up all this on the side here and cocked it up. But I don't, it's pretty, I can be able to start with it. Just these bits here, I don't know if you can see them really. Just put it around. You can see them in. You can just see little dings and dents and war. Battle scars even. I mean, all the way along that's smooth as hell. Really. It doesn't look nice because it's got the 
dust of it, but it's just these bits here. You can see that there's not a smooth transition on here. Just need to get this bit done. I think we're good. I'll mix some more stuff up. <clears throat> that's almost well here. So that's apply. I mean, it's not like <clears throat> filling in massive holes. It's just trying to get this this transition from up here down to this end as soon as possible. Down there, it's fine. And up there, it's fine. It's just in the middle where I, it got caught. The, the, the blade got caught the first time I cut it. So, let's let that dry. The battery's going to run out, so let's turn it off. Okay, <clears throat> did another layer of um, um, Bondo P38. Um, it's quite thick now, so it's a bit too much, but I'm going to sand that down now because I've got this one as good as this, this one. It's slightly off about sort of, you know, there's quite a lot of deviation all the way along actually. So just this extra layer should, uh, should be enough to start sanding. Definitely put too much on. Come on. Let's go with sandpaper. Okay, after a lot of sanding, we seem to have a smooth transition from the lower portion of this side up to the top. So, if we have a look along here, pretty good. There's still a few divots in the edge. Uh, I need to go through those. But yeah. Pretty smooth. I've just got one last bit to do up here. Just along here. Give that a sand, and then I think that both sides are done pretty much with regards to this slant from the top down to the bottom. Um, obviously, you need to paint and things, but that's not going to be done for ages. So yeah, let's get on with. Let's just zoom out. <clears throat> let's just. Uh, Start signing this bit here. Okay, now we've got a pretty smooth transition now all the way down I mean, you probably see that there's pretty little imperfections but the t-molding groove is going to go along here so and also there's little dings and dents all the way along well every so often along here but again <clears throat> I think what I'll do is I'll do the t-molding groove slot down here um, and once that's done, I think fill fill the rest in because there's no point doing it now. And then uh, the tea molding groove goes down and it, it causes a few more dents and dings. So, um, come on, focus. Not focusing. Um, but yeah, there we go. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty good. Let's have a look all the way down here. 
this thing doesn't focus very well unfortunately but yeah they're pretty equal both sides if I look down the, the length of it it's pretty straight yeah pretty good job in the end you can't even see where the additional bit of wood was put on so it's what it's about here this is extra wood here it was used no more now as you can't see it really and obviously the paint's going to go on top you'll never see it again so no one will ever know um well unless they watch the video of course <laughs> which no one will um yeah so uh next thing i think is to get some of the back panel done and uh, start gluing the sides together. There's a thin film of dust everywhere at the moment. <laughs> Look at that. Some sanding. So, I'm going to do some tidying up in a minute. But, <clears throat> oops, zooming in. Let's move over here. Both sides finished. <laughs> Uh, let's have a quick look at what we've achieved. Nice reason, but you can ever slightly see the line where I put the uh, new bit of wood on. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty good, pretty straight. Um, same goes for the other side. Uh, could do a bit more sanding to be honest at some point with a bit um, higher grade sandpaper because I'm going to use the 80 grit but um, yeah it's Zoom back out. pretty good I think so uh, on to the next bit which I think will be the bottom back panel um, just where the door, just below where the door is going to sit, the back door. Right, <clears throat> we're going to uh, cut some more of the wood today. Um, we're going to cut the base of the cabinet. You can see that I've already measured it out. If this thing focuses, there we go. Um, but before I wanted to do that, I wanted to figure out. <clears throat> What was causing the problems I had last time, uh, if you can remember, um, I had to completely um, sort of salvage the front side of the cabinet where it didn't uh, cut correctly. Turns out it's a problem with my jigsaw that's down there. It works fine, but I'm not sure why. Now, now before it cut fine, but now it seems to cut. I just I did a test. On this bit of wood here, and you can see it just it deviates from the line, even though I've got it up against this. Um, I'm just trying to think that. I wonder if before <clears throat> I was um, cutting this way on the on the other bits, and this stopped it from curving off. But obviously, when I was cutting the front, um, I couldn't do that. There wasn't wasn't enough room for this to be to be on the right hand side. So because um, yeah obviously it looks like it's going left but I've cut it from the other way so what I've done let me zoom back out rather than get another jigsaw which I can still use that one but it just doesn't cut in a straight line I got one of these <laughs> which I've always wanted one of these I mean it's not it's not ridiculously expensive uh, one. Um, it's probably a budget one. In fact, it was it was probably the third cheapest one of being Q, but yeah, hopefully it'll be alright. Um, it's got a nice blade on it. So it's the first time I'm using one of these. I used to use a jigsaw, so I'm a bit nervous. But um, the good thing with this one is it's got a guide on it as well, so I can just ride up against the side because these. <laughs> This wood here was cut at being Q with their big saw machine. So it should be at right angles already. So I should be able to use the sides to cut to length. So let's get it set up and uh, start cutting. OK, 
Okay, I've got everything measured up. <clears throat> Had a practice cut earlier on. Pretty straight, which is good. Um, hopefully this will be the same. Um, it's quite scary using one of these things <laughs> for the first time. Um, but yeah, as long as you're safe with them and you respect them, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> I mean, they've got guards here, guards here. Um, you can set the depth and all sorts of stuff. So, um, right, so I'm going to try and cut along here. Now. So, uh, fingers crossed that I don't cut my fingers off. Using the laser, really. Well, just sort of on the line. I'm, I'm cutting slightly to the right because it takes quite a chunk of the wood out. So let's go. Probably a tiny bit too much. Let's see if that is going on the side so we can see what you guys can see. Um, yeah, uh, I'll add a bit too, maybe a tiny bit too much, but yeah, it's really straight. So uh, I can sand that down if I need to, but to be honest, that's going to be, I think. That width weighs, I'm not sure, I can't remember. <laughs> Got the measurements. Right, so I need to cut this bit now. So let's do that now. Okay, I can use the guide now on this one. Obviously before, I was cutting right through the middle of the wood, so I can, the guide's only so long, so I couldn't really use it, but I've got this, I think, now set up. So, let's go. Yeah, Bad. Tiny, tiny little divot there. But that's, I think that's just part of the wood actually. Let's pop that down. Other than that, pretty straight, I think. And the other bit would go over here. <laughs> Tell from the wood that you cut easy to see if that's straight or not. Yeah, it's pretty straight. Oh, okay. So that's the base done. Um, so that's the base done. I also need to do, um, like I said before, the bottom of. So if we not over here, dust everywhere at the moment. I've still got a mask on. Um, <clears throat> just come down. Got our sides here. So, I'm going to put a picture or something. <laughs> so, you can see what I'm trying to do. Um, but there's a, a piece of wood that goes along here, and then the door goes to that here, then there's another piece of wood up here. So, uh, We've done the base and now I want to do the bit that wood comes that joins these two together along the bottom. So uh, we'll measure that and cut that. Okay, we've got the next uh, next part of 
couple of dimensions lined up. Um, so let's cut through this. Measure this, hopefully it's the right size, you'd be like 150mm. And it is perfect. Nice and straight. Right, next bit. Okay, just come back here a second. Oh, I'm getting caught. Right, so this, the, this bit there just for the width. Plug him in, guide lined up. Too bad, that's alright. Measure it, make sure it's not okay. I don't know what the measurement was now. <laughs> Four, five, seven, I think it was. Yeah, that's about right. So, Okay, <clears throat> right, I'm going to try and get the, um, the base connected to the two sides now, um, along with part of the back panel, um, just so we've got some kind of structure. Um, I'm, I'm sort of, although I've got a computer model with it, so I'm sort of winging it <laughs> as I go as well. So, um, so what I'm going to do, so this is going to go uh, here. This is in the inside dimensions, so that goes there. See our circular saw's done a good job because it's really straight and on the line. Now, let's just see if the camera's lined up yet. I'll have to just move up a bit for this. Now we're going to have here. Let's have our side. Notice that the front, it's like gap, but that's because obviously we need the, um, need the front panel, uh, the kickboard, whatever it's called. <clears throat> uh, I can't remember if it's going on the top or to the, or that side, but um, I'll work that out when I get to that point. So there we go, so that's, oh, if I leave that, that stays up right, sort of. <laughs> um, I'll keep an eye in case it falls, but yeah. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, if I can get this out, some of this stuff, cut to length, and run it along the bottom of the sides, um, including place with no more nails, uh, which I use for my other machine, my other arcade machine, which is just over over there you can see in the corner that seems to be holding out fine I mean all right it's just butt joints and it's you know relatively simple but I'm not a carpenter I don't have the tools to do you know complicated joints and in you know this where is it 
this stuff here is brilliant. It, you know, um, you've still got to clamp it in place, but it, it instantly grabs, um, fills gaps, um, and it's. I find, and I've done. I actually did it with the sides on these, that it's stronger than the actual wood once it's dry. So um, that's how I'm going to be doing it. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so what I need to do, uh, I need to draw a line along here and a short line along there. Um, so where the wood's going to be, be placed. So um, I don't want the, um, this is going to be the, the um, plywood uh, sheet, or not sheet, the um, plywood beam that I have, sorry. Okay, where's my today? Um, I don't want it all the way over here, because I've got to think about the front panel. Um, so it doesn't really matter how long it is, as long as, I go back there. But it's going to be 18 mil from the bottom. So the line's going to be 18 mil because these bits of MDF that I have are 18 mil in, in thickness. <clears throat> so that when I put this wooden beam across here, and I glue that beam and this side to the bottom, it sits flush with the bottom of the cabinet. So I'll measure those now. Okay, it turns out I didn't need to um, measure after all, I could just use this piece here because it's already cut. Um, measured it with, against the bottom and just used that as a guide uh, to measure where I need to put my beam. Now I'm going to only have it up to about here because I want it messing with any kind of supporting beams I put up here. Um, I can always put in extra ones if I need to at a later date, but because this glue holds so, so well, <laughs> I'll probably end up chiseling it off and I don't want to do that. So we'll go as far as that, which is 50, uh, 500 millimeters. Um, so I'm going to cut my um, my beam, 500 mil. It'll bring it to there, and also I can then use that um, to stick the back, the bottom pack panel on as well. Um, so let's get cutting. Okay, I don't really have to be super accurate with this. Um, so I'm just going to line it up and just cut through it. Yeah, we're not going to get a, a really accurate cut on this, but I just need it to be a certain length so that the glue can uh, support it. So, let's measure up the next one and I'll cut that one. Okay, next one lined up, ready to go. Yeah, not exactly the same size, look, but it doesn't matter at all. As long as they're short enough not to interfere with the front, then I'm happy with that. So, the next thing to do is glue them onto the sides. Okay, so two pieces were cut. I actually put uh, this little back panel on just to see how it would look, and I completely forgot that. <laughs> that uh, let's move it this way a bit. But I need a bit of a gap here for this to sit on. So, I think I did mention earlier when I completely forgot to do it. So, that sits like that. So, lucky left more than I actually needed at the front. Um, I could always cut it again, but. Um, that's, I think, plenty of room. So this could be stuck like that, and then this one gets stuck later on. I actually need to do some holes on the actual Pac-Man. There's some vents. We probably don't need vents, to be honest, but I want to look, make it look quite cool. So I think there's two vents there. So before I stick it on, I need to cut that 
cut those out. So um, I'll do that probably in the next video. So what I need to do is just stick these on uh, on both sides and then um, clamp it down. And then we'll probably put the base on after 24 hours once the, glue, the first lot of glue is set. So let me just get this line up here. Perfect. Right, let's get glue in. Right, got the glue. I'm going to put it on this side. Try and put it too near the edges because it will come out the sides. This stuff's like cement, so it's quite hard to get off once it's once it's set. So, and the good thing about it is, it, although it grabs, you can move it around for quite a while afterwards just to get it in the right place. So, right there. What I can you do is use the wood that's going to go here to line it up. Squeeze it down first. So let's move it ever so slightly. It's where I want it to. That's what I love this stuff. It still, I mean, like, even it's still quite. It grabs. It's just really good. <laughs> it's hard to describe unless you've used it before. So that's right up against there. So what we can do, I mean this isn't the bit of wood that's going to go there, but they're all the same width, so I can check. See that? You just align up, so it's, and again it's not going to matter so much because it's, it's going to be on the bottom, you'll never see it, but I just want everything to be flush. I don't have to do as so much sanding to it at the end. So I'm going to go around the other side, keep the camera at the same time. Ugh. Come out the side here. And then line it up. It's marked off there, so if I push it in this direction. Very slowly. Stir that off. On. Let's make sure this doesn't move too much. Right here. I think that's it. <clears throat> right. Just need to clamp that in place, and then we just put this one on the other side. So do that in a sec. Okay, <clears throat> next bit. Um, let's move back a bit. See what we're doing. I was going to clamp these on, but when I tried to clamp it, it moved this ever so slightly. Um, I think my clamps are, for whatever reason, aren't, aren't clamping completely vertically. They're, they're sort of a bit skew with. Um, when I did my other uh, cab, I didn't have any clamps at all. I just pushed it on and left it so I'm pretty confident that'll be that should be fine um, this isn't going to be bearing any load I don't think anyway I think so um, so let that dry um, as you can see at the top I've got I've got our other one on top now I've got them pointing the opposite way um, so that um, this is the inside and this is the inside on my previous cabinet, <laughs> what I did was on that one over over there. Um, 
I stupidly put them the same way round and therefore uh, glued this to the outside of one of them. <laughs> so uh, I had to get my brother-in-law who's a, um, a carpenter um, with some very, very sharp chisels to chisel this off because this would not come off when it was glued on. With, again, with no more nails, so it just shows how strong it is. Uh, it took him about half an hour to an hour chiseling uh, the um, these bits of uh, plywood off. So um, yeah, it's pretty strong. Um, so yeah, so they're sort of pointing towards each other. So this is this is the inside, and that's the inside. So I've got my, and again because they're the opposite way round. This is this is the back. And that's the back so that when I flip flip that round the top one this will be on the inside so <clears throat> let's just clear this one I'm gonna sneeze in a second <coughs> oh, there we go <clears throat> all the dust in here oh dear right again same technique really easy A bit of extra glue that I can. What I do normally as well. I'll leave that. If I come around this side. Once um, this is all dried and in place, what I do is I usually get some glue and I just put some glue along here so that there's more surface area. Um, I'll probably do a bit at the front here. And front the other side, obviously, because can't do it up there because that's the back. So, can't really do anything else now. 24 hours. Uh, where's my. There we go. If we go up and have a look. See that? Yeah, so <clears throat> wait for that to dry, and then what I'm going to do is then glue this on like that. These are they don't need any glue. Um, and I'm going to do the same, obviously, the other side. Um, and then they should. You know, obviously they're they're then structurally together then, so um, and I can build around that because it's sometimes a bit hard to get an idea of where you're going with something until you start actually building. I'm not actually going to paint it uh, now. Let's take that off before it falls off. I'm going to wait until everything's done before I start painting it in case I need to make any adjustments. Um, so I'm going to get everything in and then paint it. Um, so yeah. Let's uh, just wait for 24 hours and then carry on. Okay, so I haven't bothered letting it dry for 24 hours because it's pretty, I mean, if we look at this, it's pretty rock solid. That's just come off because I was just about to show you. I've just taken this much off. I'm not sure, that's about a centimetre probably from here because um, I need the front. I don't know what it's called, kick plate, door, whatever. It's not going to be a door, but to be able to fit here. So if, if we look here now, when that, if I put something on here, that's now flush down here. And obviously it will taper. You can see the nice tapering effect starting to take place there. Um, as this is straight towards uh, the top of the... Uh, Control panel. <clears throat> so before, and you put a piece of wood in there. It was, it was over the edge by miles. So just got that done. <clears throat> this is how to place the vice at the moment. I'm actually going to do it on this one because this is the one I did first. So. What 
to do is I'm going to line this up. It's going to glue this. This is the front. This this side. That this side. So this goes flush with the with this bit here. And obviously, the back bit comes in here. Um, so I'm pretty happy. Everything lines up. So I think glue it in place and then clamp it in just to hold it there so it doesn't fall over. So I'm going to find my glue. There it is. So again, you come around here. Keep moving the camera so you can see what we're doing. So I'm going to glue all the way along here. Uh, sorry, just to there because I'm not putting the other bit in yet. So. It's getting this place now. That's sticking pretty well now. Just touch and go there for a bit. Make sure it's <clears throat> vertical as well now because it can be just slightly off. I'm not sure. I uh, can't really tell. Right. The cat outside again. Just see from the side. Let's just go down. Yeah, pretty good. Oops. No. <clears throat> Zoom a bit here. Just so there's no gaps. So you can, I don't know if you see, but there's, there's a few. Yeah, so it's mostly filled in well because of where I put the glue. But what I like to do is almost like when you're tiling is to sort of grab the glue in the gap there. So I'm getting there. Give me a finger. In fact, if we Guinness the cat outside. He obviously wants to help me, but he can't because he'll get his paws sticky. Can't you get glue on your paws? Pretty straight. I mean, the floor in here isn't that straight anyway, and I'm on a rickety old workbench as well, so that's not far off. I'd say that's pretty straight. Not much movement there anyway, I don't think. 
Right, I'm definitely going to have to leave this for 24 hours now. Um, so yeah, there's our base on, sort of. We need to put it onto this side next. Um, and then once that's done, I think I'm not going to do that today. But we need to put the holes in here for the vents and then that can go uh, on here. Obviously I can't it won't fit the moment because of the clamp but that will fit there just like that. So yeah. Well we'll, put, we'll end the uh, video there. Um, the cab's starting to get a couple of the bits and pieces on it now, which is good. I hope that some of those bits didn't go on too long. Uh, I try to keep it as short as possible. Um, so um, next week what we'll try and do is um, we'll try and finally get that back piece on that if we keep saying I'm going to do. I need to cut the holes for the vents um, and we'll see if we can get a couple of other bits and pieces added on there. So, um, so just to end this video, I thought I'd play the sequel of the game we played earlier, which is Power Stone 2. Just a complete mental game. I don't like it as much as the first one, it's not as focused. Um, but when you get a couple of people around playing this, um, especially on the Dreamcast with the four players, um, it's a pretty good party game. Um, so yeah, we'll leave it like that. And uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time. <laughs>